You've had the uh, young players, the Incavillias, the Bobby Woods, the Edwin. There's a lot to look forward to. And as with all young teams, mistakes have been made. Adversity has been faced. Several times this year, we've referred to them as the resilient Rangers. They seem to be able to bounce back from injuries and bad plays and all kinds of things. Certainly, the injury factor has been a big key. Uh, they've had five and one time six players on the disabled list. Key players, too, when you look at Don Slott, Larry Parrish, and the like. They've been able to bounce back. They've been able to win without them in the lineup consistently, which to me is amazing uh, for a veteran team, much less a young team that we're talking about in the Rangers. Well, during this half hour, we have a lot of different things for you. We have some exciting highlights from the 86 season so far. We'll hear from manager Bobby Valentine, general manager Tom Grieve, and some of the players. And also a little bit later on, you'll get your first listen and look at Here Come the Rangers, an original song written for this 86 team. So we're glad you're with us and hope you enjoy the half hour of the Rangers midseason look coming up. At a news conference last week at Arlington Stadium, Ranger Majority owner Eddie Childs announced his intent to sell his interest to Gaylord Broadcasting Company. Gaylord also owns KTVT Channel 11. That one is out of here. If it's there, kiss it goodbye. Pete O'Brien, a three-run shot with two for this team's newfound success, it's easy to see the part manager Bobby Valentine has played. That youthful enthusiasm and positive attitude has been just exactly what a bunch of young players needed to keep their confidence when things weren't going well and to keep their heads straight when they were. Anyone who saw Bobby last season could figure out he had what it takes to become a top manager. But what he has done so far in 1986 is above even the best expectations. Looking back, from the first day of spring training, I'd have to say that good things have happened. Um, uh, we've had some injuries, and we've overcome them. We've, had, we've gotten guys off of the disabled list. They're back playing. We've uh, seen young players mature, and uh, I'm quite happy with the uh, state of the union right now, or the state of the Texas Rangers. And uh, as I sa also said in spring training, I believe we're a team that's going to improve as the year goes on, and I still see a lot of room for that improvement. In addition to being a great motivator, Valentine has shown a remarkable sense of timing. Somehow, he's managed to use all 24 players on a regular basis and bring out the best of their abilities. Just two examples, Pete Incavilla and Mitch Williams. Bobby gave Incavilla a real confidence boost when he put him in the cleanup spot on opening day and left him there through good times and bad. The result is a rookie power hitter who plays like a veteran and seems to be at his best in pressure situations. And speaking of pressure, Mitch Williams seems to thrive on it these days as he's become one of the best short relievers in the American League. Mitch has always been one of the hardest throwing young pitchers in baseball, but his wildness kept him from being effective. This year, Valentine has picked just the right situations to channel all that energy into productivity. Some outside people think that that's abusing young players when you put them in, in the uh, fire right off the bat, but I really believe in that. Uh, I believe when you get here, you come here to play, and uh, the best way to see a guy uh, play at the major league level and demonstrate his skills is right out of the chute. Get in uniform, go out there and play. Let's not worry about it. I think the more people think about the game of baseball, the uh, less they react. And it really is a react reaction game. Uh, Pete Incavilla came out of the chute hitting fourth. Uh, Jose Guzman was our opening day pitcher. Bobby Witt and Edwin Correa were right in the... Uh, starting rotation with uh, Mitch Williams coming out of A-ball and doing the job he's done. So um, I'm really happy with the, the crop of rookies and, and seasoned veterans like uh, Steve Bichel and Otis Mendel have and the job that they've done. Going into this season, a realistic goal for the Rangers was finishing in the top half of the American League's Western Division. Now that they've shown they can contend for the title, there's no reason to think they can't win the division. I think with good good health we could have an exciting team and our team is a team that uh, our main goal in spring training was um, to be the most improved team in baseball our secondary goal was to improve as the year goes on I want to improve as the year goes on the only thing that matters is the team we're playing tonight how we do against them and, and our objective is to win tonight that's it pure and simple and I think as long as we have that attitude Yesterday doesn't matter, and tomorrow doesn't matter, and then you could put forth a good performance on the field. You know, one of the most exciting things about this Ranger ball club is we probably haven't seen their best yet. We've talked about the injuries, but some of the key players have not gotten off to their best starts. 
In the early part of the season, Oda B. McDowell wasn't hitting the ball nearly as well as we saw him hit at the end of 85. But in the past few weeks, he's on a tear, and the average is climbing daily. Now batting first, they cheer for Oda B. I see the ball well, and uh, it's just like if I am I'm selective and don't try to do too much, that I'm going to get a hit no matter what. I'm going to hit the ball hard anyway, so uh, that's the biggest thing for me is to feel comfortable at the plate and see the ball go. As we saw last year, when McDowell hits his stride, he's capable of staying in the groove for a long time. And if he keeps going at the pace he has for the past three weeks, this could be a great year for the second-year center fielder. We're going to score some runs. And, uh, as long as the pitching staff throws the ball like they've been, have been throwing, uh, it's going to be a big plus for us in the, long, in, the, uh, in the stretch here. But when we come back, we'll take a look at Pete O'Brien, a proven second-half player who already has put some big numbers on the board. Well hit, right field. Not able to get this one as Brian Harper. Fletcher is to third. O'Brien is to second. They will hold there. Second and third, one out as Pete O'Brien got all of one to right field and rammed it to the wall. Baseman Pete O'Brien. After slumping badly early in the season, he came on strong to become the team's most valuable player. This year, a 20-home run, 100-RBI season was a real possibility. But as Pete told us in spring training, he had to get off to a good start this time. This is really one of the best spring trainings I've gotten off to as far as uh, how I felt at the plate. So uh, I'm looking forward to carrying my, my mechanics and my, my swing into the season uh, early this year and not have to get uh, into June before I break loose. You need some runs, call for Pete O'Brien. Well, Pete got the start he wanted as he kept that average up around 400 through April and settled in around the 300 mark through the rest of the spring. Well, I think I found a swing coming out of camp that uh, was, was, was pretty nice to, to fall into, but uh, as the year's gone on, I, I've kind of gotten away from that one, too. I felt that maybe I had to have too good a timing to, to carry that swing on through the year. So I, I struggled a little bit in May and June, and uh, hopefully we came out of this last night. Although he's one of the young veterans on this team, Pete has suffered through some hard times with the Rangers, and he's enjoying being with a first-place team. Yeah, I think you get in trouble if you start trying to rally around one guy, and we don't have that here. We, uh, we have a lot of guys that, that get along together and uh, don't have too many clicks. Uh, it, it's a good atmosphere in the clubhouse as well as on the baseball field. O'Brien can still remember his rookie season where the Rangers got off to a great start and then fell apart in the second half of the year. We asked him what it will take to make sure that doesn't happen again. Well, I think in 83, I don't, I don't think we really know how we got there, you know, and I think uh, this year we had such good preparation. I think we had such a great camp and uh, have an awful lot of talent. Uh, we had good pitching in 83. We had good starting pitching, but uh, didn't have the bullpen. And we've got Mitch Williams and Greg Harris and uh, Dale Mahorsik and Mickey Mailer and the, the rest of them out there that have just done a great job for us. You know, as a former pitcher, I've really enjoyed watching the young pitchers on the Rangers staff pitch this year, Guzman, Correa, Witt. They've struggled on some days, but then they've come out the very next time and pitch like Major League veterans. Korea fast, they knuckle down with a hook. Mitch can pitch the stubble when it's rough. But when it gets right down to it, the man the Rangers really count on when things are going bad is the old veteran, Charlie Huff. Even if the kids have struggled a couple of games, you know that Charlie can turn it around in his very next start. But Charlie missed his first few starts because of a broken finger. But since coming back, he's been as effective as he has at any time in his big league career. Well, it really didn't change much. Uh, the only thing I had to adjust to was when I first did it uh, was the pain of letting the ball go. Uh, usually when I throw a knuckleball, my fingers straighten out. And after the surgery, the tendons uh, are still pretty tight. They don't straighten out quite the same. My finger doesn't go straight even when pushing on it now. But uh, I had to adjust to that. But other than that, throwing the ball is still the same. The rest of the starters are all rookies. Bobby Witt, Edwin Correa, Jose Guzman. But the interesting thing is, when one is struggling, the others seem to be right on form. Early in the year, Guzman was having some problems with his mechanics, and Witt was extremely wild. But Ed Correa, who is the youngest man in the major leagues, was pitching like a 10-year veteran. Bobby Witt has been wild nearly all year, but with that 95-mile-an-hour fastball, he's still been able to get people out. And the Rangers seem to find ways to help him out both defensively and offensively. Every time I go out there, you really never know what's going to happen. You know, Eddie goes out there, he's always relaxed, uh, got everything under control. Guzzi's always, you know, consistent. And myself, I go out there sometimes, I could have, you know, some good breaking ball, good fastball, good location, and do a good job. Other times, if I don't have the good, you know, breaking ball, things just didn't, don't work out. So it's always, you know, you know, some sort of question when I go out there, I guess. 
Fortunately for Jose Guzman, pitching coach Tom House has a good eye. He quickly spotted Jose's mechanical problem and has him back on track. The other Ranger starter, Mike Mason, won his first four games, but has been sidelined most of the past month with an injury. He's looking for a good finish to the year. The exciting thing about this Rangers staff is that they've kept the team in contention so far, and most of them are just learning about the Major League. If, as you might expect, they'll get better with experience, we could be looking for good things this summer. They've surprised me in the fact that they've uh, remained fairly consistent. They've had their bad games, but they've had more good games, and I think that uh, is, is why we're in the hunt. Still to come, Steve Buschel, Gary Ward, Scott Fletcher, and Tom Green. So stay with us. All-star third baseman Buddy Bell to Cincinnati and brought up a relatively unknown young man named Steve Bouchelle from Oklahoma City. To be quite honest, a lot of people thought the ball club would suffer both offensively and defensively. Well, it didn't take long for Boo to show that he could handle the defensive side as he made some plays that brought back memories of Bell in his prime. Coming out of spring training, we still didn't know a lot about Steve's offensive potential because he was hurt most of the time in Florida. And if it weren't for a remarkable fact that his first 11 home runs came with no one on base, Bouchelle could easily have 50 RBIs by now. That's pretty good production for a position that requires some power. I think so. I think I'm just getting comfortable now, and I'm getting to the point where I'm starting to learn a little bit about myself and what I'm capable of doing. And it's been the whole learning experience for me that's, I think, helped me out. And if anyone thought that showing with a glove last fall was a fluke, well, it didn't take long for them to see that Bouchelle was a potential gold glove man himself someday. That blonde hair isn't the only thing he has in common with Buddy Bell. Already this year, you've heard a lot about the trade with the Chicago White Sox that brought over Edwin Correa for Dave Schmidt and Wayne Tolleson. Well, Scott Fletcher was a part of that deal, too, and he could just turn out to be the icing on the cake. We first began to see some of the potential Scott has in spring training when he hit well over 300 and made some incredible defensive plays. Scott didn't manage to win the starting shortstop job there, but when he got in the lineup back here in Texas, he never came out. It's always fun to contribute, Steve, and uh, when you get the opportunity to play and get a lot of playing time and uh, help contribute to winning, it's always a lot of fun. So I've been uh, happy to get that playing time and, uh, and to help contribute to win. Fletcher often hits just before or just behind Oda B. McDowell. As a man who can handle the bat with the best of them, he gives the Rangers all kinds of hit-and-run possibilities. The Rangers are solid at the other infield positions. Curtis Wilkerson has overcome a slow start and is covering a lot of territory at both second and short. And although starting second baseman Toby Hara has been plagued with a lingering virus and a slow start at the plate, he's a vital stabilizing influence on this young team. Toby represents the final remaining link to the old Washington Senators who moved to Texas in the early 70s. Double plays, a snap for Toby Hara. At the beginning of the year, there were a lot of people who thought Bobby Valentine had taken leave of his senses. He put rookie Pete Incavilla on the Major League roster, even though Pete had never spent a day in the minor leagues. He then inserted Pete in the starting lineup at cleanup. Well, no one is accusing Bobby of making a mistake on that call now. Incavilla has proven he can carry his weight, and the best is yet to come. The exciting thing about Incavilla is that he is a power hitter, but a power hitter who can get you that crucial line drive single when needed. There have been some down times for Pete this year, some long streaks when the strikeouts start to mount. But the most encouraging thing is that he doesn't seem to let that bother him. Something to look for in the second half of the season. In spite of his strong home run showing so far, Pete has yet to hit what you would call a real long ball bin. When he does, the runs should come fast and often. And throughout the years, Gary Ward, the Rangers' left fielder, has been tagged as a streak hitter. But you can forget about Gary's average any time during the season. At the end, it's going to be around 300. And Gary Ward of Texas Ranger Power. Well, this year, Gary isn't waiting until the second half to make his presence felt. About a month ago, he caught fire and he's been blistering the ball. And when Gary hits one of those streaks, it seems most of his hits come in crucial situations. How does Gary feel about the Rangers' chances of holding on through the long summer? I think the main thing is uh, pitching to continue on pitching well like they have in the first part of the year. Uh, and and to, for our relievers to come in and stop the opponents when we are one run up or two runs up, and also for us to continue on staying within ourselves and scoring a lot of runs li like we have been doing. Of course, Ward is one of the established players on the ball club, and so is Larry Parrish. Uh, that knee injury sidelined him for most of last season, but this year he's made a big comeback. 
He's shown us the power we've been accustomed to seeing from Larry. Harris is a designated hitter. I don't know where the swing is at, but it hasn't been there the last couple of weeks. And uh, right now I'm just struggling to try to get any timing at all up there to plate. And, uh, you know, probably struggling as much as, uh, you know, I've struggled in the last four or five years. And, uh, you know, I feel like if I could get the thing going again, that, uh, you know, we'll put us in real good shape the second half of the year with everybody coming back off the, uh, you know, injury list and uh, getting slotted back and, you know, everybody healthy again and, you know, put a rush on for the second half. There are a lot of exciting things to look forward to in the second half of the season. Last year, it was rookie Odeby McDowell who put it all together. This year, it could be Ruben Sierra. Ruben here, another hot Sierra. When he was called up from Oklahoma City midway through the spring, Sierra started to contribute immediately as he homered in his very first Major League game. Right now, his average is down, but Ruben has shown he can hit with power and cover a lot of ground in the outfield. Buzz, like Ruben Sierra, young players called up from the minor leagues, young players mixing with older players, teamwork on the field, but there's a lot of teamwork in the front office, too. A lot of teamwork and a lot of young people in the front office, as a matter of fact. <laughs> the youngest general manager in baseball, the youngest manager on the field, Tom Grieve, Bobby Valentine, they have to work together well, and that's where the teamwork goes upstairs. I would probably prefer to wait before we really pat ourselves on the back. I think the key was there were a lot of there was a lot of opportunity in spring training. I hope we never go to spring training with the same amount of opportunity, positions to be won. Um, but all the young guys that that took advantage of that opportunity earned the spots on the team. They weren't given the spots just because they were good young prospects. Incavilia led the team in home runs and uh, batting at hit 300. Bobby Witt gave up two or three runs the whole spring. Correa and Guzman were strong. Mitch Williams showed that he could throw the ball over the plate. All the young guys earned the job, and it's a combination of their ability, good coaching. I've always taken good coaching for granted, but what Tom House and Dick Egan accomplished with some of those young pitchers was remarkable, made a believer out of me. Um, so they took advantage of the situation, and right now it looks like a good decision. Well, don't forget, Ranger fans, baseball action coming up in just a few moments from Cleveland. And, Buzz, I know you and I have been so excited about what we've seen from this ball club on the road this year. Your thoughts on the upcoming season after the All-Star break? I think we have a lot more excitement in store for us, Bob. Uh, Bobby Valentine has this ball club really in high gear. They're healthy once again for the most part, and uh, I believe it's going to come down to the month of September. I think that the Ranger fans and the ball club are going to be right in the middle of things come September. It should be exciting, and as we move forward to September and maybe October, you'll be hearing this next tune very many times during the rest of the season. It was written original composition by Bill Baker, who is a Ranger fan and a professional composer. Right now, here come the Rangers. This one is gone, folks. Here come the Rangers. The Texas Rangers. Here they come. What they leave the ballpark. 